Hello everyone, I am Phoenix Tremaine and this is my review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. If you haven't done so, please take a moment to subscribe. If you have subscribed, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. And um, I'm going to get into this review. Now this is um, the season finale of season 8. And I'm going to tell you right now, the best way to describe this uh, episode would be um, absolute boredom. <laughs> which is a reflection of the entire season. Most of the season, we had a few moments here and there that that seemed like, you know, they were going to get hyped and give us some shit we wanted. But, um, really, we could have done without the season. It desperately needed a full season of NeNe. And, um, that kind of was the only time it sort of tried to pick up when NeNe um, was around. Even though she didn't do anything dramatic or fight with anyone or anything. Just her presence caused massive disrupt disruptions between like Kenya and Cynthia. And even when she finally sees Candy in this episode, it's like oh shit moments. Now this is what I can say also about this episode. You know it's a bad episode when the flashbacks of seasons going back to season two, you know, are more exciting than Everything that happened this season, and definitely everything that happened in this episode. Because this episode was just sort of like a reflection on things that just happened. You know, it starts off with Candy and Todd visiting his mother's grave. You know, Phaedra and Portia, um, they, they're in the kitchen, and they're talking about Apollo, uh, um, what's her name, Candy, and, um, eventually we learned Cynthia, um, the feds came to get, uh, um, Apollo stuff they were hiding for him, um, and so, you know, everyone is thinking, especially Kenya, that how would the feds know they had his stuff other than watching the show, you know, because they did talk about having his shit, and they were on television, but anyway, Let's blame it on Phaedra, even though she probably did it. Let's blame it on Phaedra. Although you talk about all the shit on television as if, as if there is an implications in real life. Um, and then uh, they kind of shade Chris a little bit. Um, Phaedra doesn't sort of get into it when she talks about Chris, which is Kim's husband, is going to dance with her at her holiday party. And Portia immediately starts trying to insinuate that he's gay, but Phaedra, who is kind of sort of friends with Kim, doesn't want to feed into it twice. Um, then we get Kenya, her her boyfriend, Matt, which Nini, <laughs> at the end of the episode, called him her, like, renegade, you know, which, but Kenya, you never know. Um, <laughs> it brought her some puppies. Wow, exciting shit, ain't it, for a season finale. Um, now, Peter got this freaky-ass massage. And I say it's a freaky massage because you're on camera. You got a crew, you got lighting, and this motherfucker trying to get naked and get his dick jerked off and maybe some head or something, I don't know. But Cynthia's offers to give her husband a massage. She's got the massage table out there. She's got a little massage uniform on. And Peter's like, oh, yeah, straight to the happy ending. And, you know, and Cynthia's mind is like, you know, Negro, don't you know that we're on camera? But it looked like maybe he had a couple of drinks or something and didn't give two shits about the camera. He just, he always gets this, like, excitement about his wife touching him like he ain't never been touched by a woman in, like, 10, 15 years. It's like, you know, I had a friend like that who his wife would just refuse to give him pussy. And then when he finally got pussy, I always knew it because he'd be like a little kid. Ooh. I'm like, your wife gave you some pussy, huh? He's like, yes, finally. And then his wife wondered why he cheated on her with a white girl. Just saying. And I just mentioned that she's white because that was the thing that really stuck in his wife's craw because they're black. And the fact that he had sex with a white girl just really fucked with her. But she should have gave him the pussy and then he wouldn't have fucked a white girl. Whatever. Um, so Peter tried to have his freaky ass massage, 
where he was, he took his underwear off. He did all his shit. And then Noel comes down the steps, interrupting her father. Leon has came, come, came to get her. And so Cynthia's all mortified that, you know, her daughter caught her having, giving her husband a massage on camera that she'll see on TV anyway, where he's covered in a sheet. And she's not touching anything that you can't see on Bravo. <laughs> so it's like, ooh, I touched his back. Oh, shit, my daughter's traumatized. No, bitch, whatever. Um, then Portia got her eggs frozen. Well, she didn't get her eggs frozen. She went to get a consultation about getting her eggs frozen because she's getting older. She wants to make sure she can eventually have kids. And the doctor tells you she had her kid at 42 and 38, and Portia's 34, 32 or 34, something like that. So she got time. And, um, you know, so, but we've seen Portia have this consultation before. They showed it in a flashback. This is the season finale. This is going to be like the most dramatic episode leading you to wanting to see season nine. Um, then we have Dwight as Phaedra's party planner. And then at the party where we're promised all of this drama from the promos, I knew it was going to be a whole lot of drama for the simple fact that the party was like at the very end of the episode when we had one commercial break. So I said, ain't much going to happen at this party and nothing really happened at the party. Sheree confronted um, Bob about whether or not he had sex with Tammy, which Tammy pretty much made him say he didn't fuck her. But... Just based on body language, she fucked her, and she's like, keep this shit on the low, be on camera, and tell, tell your ex-wife, you know, this lie real quick. So, so that's that was the body language I was reading, but he asked Sheree to just let it go because he's a new man, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then we had Nene tries to mend fences with Candy, and we got the flashbacks of them arguing at the reunion in, in season two. And they really haven't had much interaction whatsoever. But then Nene wants to get to business about, you know, the feds coming to her house, which was probably Nene's real goal of sitting next to Candy. Um, then we got Kenya. She comes in as the Grinch, um, dressed like the Grinch, painted in green and all that kind of shit. And Kenya does not come to the party to have fun. Kenya comes to the party to stir up a spot and start trouble. But nobody really cares about this fed shit. So she stirs the pot, but then she looks mad because nobody's, you know, trying to, trying to, you know, do shit about it. So there's no fights, there's no arguments, there's no drama, there's no nothing. Um, and then, um, and then I put here in my note, um, Kim makes no real contribution to the series, the season finale the same way she made no contribution to the season. Not once did she really stand up for herself. So when we saw the preview for next week, which is the reunion show, part one of three, god damn. Even two parts I could probably deal with. But why they gotta stretch this shit all the way out to three parts, giving us flashbacks of shit we saw already in the season, just dragging the shit out. So that they can make it 20 episodes instead of 17 or whatever. So, so um, in it, you know, Kim like tells Kenya, say something else. And then Sheree's like, what you gonna do? <laughs> and then I'm like, that's what all of America is saying. Kim, what you gonna do? What you gonna do if Kenya say some shit? Because Kenya will say some shit. You know, this is her screen time. It's the end of the season. It's a reunion show. This is where the bitch get dragged and get to be in all the blogs and shit. So, so, so when Kim say, like, say something else, we like, yeah, bitch. <laughs> say something because we want to see Kim do some shit. Kim don't need to be in the next season, point blank period. You know, she's not built for Real Housewives. I don't know what she could possibly bring to season nine, but Kim, you ain't you ain't built for this kind of show. No love and hip hop, no rouse wives of nothing. You need to find yourself another franchise or another series. This ain't you. So that's it for the Real Housewives of Atlanta. The official season is over and now we just got the reunion show. And the reunion show looked more exciting than the whole season 
put together all 17 episodes. So I will see you and we'll talk about the reunion show. Thanks for watching.